Welcome to Draw This. In this episode, we're going to draw a clock. I'll be using Adobe Illustrator today, and then we'll finish the piece off with Adobe Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start by creating a new canvas that is 10 inches by 10 inches at 300 dpi. And then I'm going to choose the ellipse tool, which is hiding under the rectangular tool. I'm going to make sure that there's no fill. And then I'm going to choose a black stroke. I might make it a little bit thicker. And we're just going to draw the outer edge or the frame that surrounds the clock. If you hold Shift and Alt while you draw, or Shift and Option if you're using Mac, that will keep things in proportion, keep them from squashing, and it'll let you draw from the center. We'll use the black arrow selection tool to just kind of position this. You can also go to Window and find the Align palette. Double click on where it says Align, and then choose to Align to Artboard. If you align to the Artboard, that'll keep everything centered horizontally and vertically. We'll go ahead and increase the stroke width by holding shift and clicking the up button to increase the stroke. And we'll go to edit copy and we'll go to edit paste in place to duplicate this. And then we'll hold alt and shift while we scale this down. This will be the center where the clock hands connect. Let's set the stroke to no stroke and set the fill to black. And then we'll use the rectangular tool which is hiding under the ellipse tool there to just draw a long rectangle. This will be the first clock hand. This will be for the minute hand. And let's go ahead and try to center that. If you drag it, you'll get these smart guides that'll show you when it's centered. You can also just use the same little aligned trick that we used earlier to keep things aligned to the center of the canvas. Let's use the white arrow tool to select one of these anchor points and delete it. We'll select the remaining anchor point and we'll just align it centered to the canvas. I'll make sure that it's perfectly centered. I'm going to erase the tip with the eraser. And then we can go ahead and just transform this to get it looking how we want. If you hold shift, that'll keep things from squishing. So I'm just going to stretch out the top and move up the bottom and just make sure that it's all centered. I'm going to go to edit copy and edit paste in place again, and that'll make a little copy. We can scale that down for the hour hand. And then we can go ahead and rotate it using the rotate tool. Now we'll want to move the origin point of the rotation down to the bottom and then drag it. That way it will pivot from that point rather than the center. We'll go ahead and use the selection tool again just to center it right on the center of the little dial there. And we can feel free to stretch out these arms just to get them looking perfect. I'll go ahead and name all of these layers just to tidy things up. And then I'll go ahead and copy and paste this center dot. I'm going to choose paste and back this time. So I'm basically just duplicating that center and then I'm going to scale that up while holding shift and alt to fill in behind the frame there. So this will be like the face or the background of the clock. We'll just fill that with a light gray for now. And then I'm going to lock all of these layers because now I'm going to add some numbers on top and I don't want to interfere with the layers underneath. We'll choose the text tool and black and we'll go ahead and just click and type in our first number which will be 12 here. I'll hold shift just to scale this up. I always prefer to scale up the fonts this way rather than choosing a point size manually. It's just easier to do. And then I'm going to make sure that's centered with the align palette there. And then I'm going to select that layer and change the font to something that looks a little more antique, like Georgia Bold. And then rather than take out the text tool and type again, I'm just going to reposition this and then hold Alt and drag. And when you hold Alt and drag using the black arrow tool, it'll create a clone while dragging. If you hold Shift while holding Alt, you can keep the numbers aligned on whichever axis they're already on. So that just helps speed things up. I'm going to click next to this clock group and choose Release to Layers Sequence. That'll put all of these layers on their own layer, and that way if I choose Export, I can save this as a PSD with all of the layers, and I can work on this a little bit in Photoshop. So choose 300 for your resolution, make sure you're writing layers, and you can uncheck Preserve Text Editability there, and choose Maximum Editability, and go ahead and click OK, and this will export each of these layers as a Photoshop editable file, and we can add some effects in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and open that PSD in Photoshop, and first thing we'll do is we'll create a new layer. Let's move that to the bottom of the layers and let's go ahead and name that background. Let's just fill that with a white color so that we don't have a transparent background. Let's go to that outer layer and let's choose bevel from the effects. And this will give us a nice three dimensional effect for the clock. You can choose any one of these settings here that you want, but I like chisel hard and you can play with the profile to choose different profiles for the bevel. I think I like this one here, that looks pretty good. And you can feel free to experiment with these settings for size and depth. Let's go ahead and move over to the BG layer or the face of the clock, which is like the clock background. 
And let's go ahead and add a gradient overlay to that. We'll reduce the scale and the opacity just to get a subtle gradient that goes from top to bottom. And then we'll go to the center layer. We'll move that above the two hand layers. Let's add a bevel to that center layer and we'll increase the size until it looks kind of rounded. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do some work on the hand layers now. We'll start with the hour hand and we'll add a bevel to that. Let's choose chisel hard and we'll make it look nice and chiseled. Once you've created an effect, if you want to apply it to another layer, you can right click on that layer and choose copy layer style and then right click on the layer you want to paste it to and choose paste layer style. So now we've chiseled both layers the same way. You can edit the bevel to change the light direction if you want, just to make the bevel easier to see. I think I'll do that and make the light coming from the top right. And then let's go ahead and just merge that numbers group by clicking on the group and hitting Control E on our keyboard to merge all of those numbers layers together. And then we'll choose a bevel for that. This will just give it a subtle edge. I think it'll also look good with a drop shadow. So let's choose that as well and add a little bit of a drop shadow to make the numbers look like they're standing up off of the surface of the clock. Let's add some more drop shadows. We'll add them on the center layer and on the clock hands to make those look elevated off of the clock surface. Then let's go to the background, which is the clock face, and we'll add an inner shadow to that. That'll make it look like the clock rim or the outer edge of the clock is really standing up. Let's also scale down this entire group by hitting Control T to enable free transform. I'm going to make sure I hold Shift and Alt to scale it down from the center without squashing it. Now if you don't like this weird striped edge on your clock, you can edit the bevel and smooth it out to make it smoother. I think that looks a little bit better. Let's also go ahead and move the numbers layer below the hands because they should be below the hands. The hands should be on top of the numbers. And then if you want, you can go ahead and set the time on your clock to whatever time you want. So I'm going to select the hour hand and then I'm going to use Control T to enable free transform and move that origin point for the rotation to the center dot there. Then I'm just going to rotate it to four. We'll set our clock to four o'clock here. Now after rotating it, you may need to try to center it. So you can do that using the move tool and the arrow keys on your keyboard just to kind of nudge it in small increments to get it centered. And I think I'll go ahead and call this a finished piece. You can feel free to change this up and add colors and make it look however you like. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And if this is your first time watching my channel, you can click that subscribe button to get free updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.